Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning, welcome you all to the next class on this NMR spectroscopy under this particular course, Analytical Spectral Microscopy Applications of Inorganic Compounds and Nanomaterials. Just in the immediately previous class, I talked to you basics of NMR and particularly the NMR when applied to the organic systems. Now, let us come to the inorganic, which is main focus of this particular course. So, NMR spect, why is that we are dividing? organic and inorganic. Organic, as I said, all of these are done primarily in solutions like organic solvents, or orga polar, nonpolar, and occasionally even in so water, etc. And you look at the molecular in solution. And the solution state, as is talked about, when you spin, they are highly fast tumbling, fast uh, uh, rotations. All of these will nullify additional magnetic fields, which will otherwise broaden this basis. Now, what happens for the inorganic? Inorganic primarily comes from the one is the solid state. So, most of the compounds you need to measure in the solid state, and very few compounds you measure in the solution state. That is one the major difference between the inorganic and the organic. So, when you study in the solid state, what will happen? In the solid state, you have the molecule and their lattice, everything is fixed. The lat, so therefore, the molecular tumbling is completely, totally nullified, totally stopped. So, therefore, if there is no tumbling, there is no random. So, there is no random motion. If there is no random motion, the, the magnetic vectors are fixed. Therefore, very strong interactions of the magnetic of one nucleus with all other nuclei. And that is what makes it very broad and that also makes it very asymmetric in terms of the chemical shift. That is called chemical shift anisotropy and a huge level of broadening of that. When you have the, the suppose you have a nice uh, uh, signals as you have seen in uh, solution and if the same thing becomes like this. So, information cannot be obtained from here whereas, information can be obtained here. How is we know what is coupling, what is a neighbor, but here we will not know anything about it. So, here and at times you would also get something like this uh, or, or something like that all of these in the solid state because the, all of the nuclei are held in their positions and, and therefore, their vectors are not tumbling, there is no uh, rotational motion so that. So, therefore, there will be strong constructive, strong destructive forces between different nuclei and will lead to a sharp increase, a broadening and sharp decrease, a decrease all these kinds of things will play a role. So, that is where therefore, and you need to measure the solid state. In the, uh, in the inorganic. I will show you just in a while why we need the solid state is very important. Okay? So, now you got the feel why is it different. So, you get huge broad asymmetric kind of a spectra in case of solid state spectra as compared to the, the solution state and uh, mostly uh, organic can be done in solution state and mostly an inorganic is done in the solid state. Next important aspect is the paramagnetism. In the inorganic, you have a lot of transition metal ions, and the lot of transition metal ions in some oxidation state or the other, they have a paramagnetic. And well, so what? If there is a paramagnetic, why will it be a problem? Problem is that you are looking at the nuclear spin, you are putting that molecule in the magnetic field. You are also putting the same molecule which is having a metal, which is having an unpaired electron, is also in the magnetic field. So, therefore, you have a new nuclear precision as well as the electron precision. So, electron precision will give a magnetic field, nuclear precision will also give a magnetic field. These two magnetic fields the interaction because the electron uh, the, the relaxation will be very fast and those relaxation measure uh, the, the interactions of the nucleus electron magnetic field with that of the nuclear and that will be paramagnetic that is unpaired electron and that will all may shift either the signal to a, 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 a to a long 
in the either shielding side or de-shielding side or lines may become again broad or both of them okay so it can bring in the paramagnetic so it can bring uh, uh, a shift paramagnetic can bring shift to uh, down field or up field so all of these or it can broaden or both so depending upon the nature of the magnetic moment etc the field that you have so i like, will explain each one of these separately so initially i will take more of a solid state and we'll go through all that and then later on i will take the paramagnetic in another uh, class or so but before that let us look at why is that the solid state anamor is more demanding for inorganic if you look at this particular slide you are you will be easily convinced and needless to say np where will you dissolve all of this no you don't dissolve anywhere you take uh, sio2 sio2 al2o3 so these are all variety of uh, uh, materials uh, like the zeolites open framework layered materials glasses cements uh, calcium oxide silicon oxide aluminum oxide etc and ceramics uh, where with the titanium zirconium along with other oxides other metals etc electronic magnetic materials where you have a spin changing electron transport changing all these things they can be lanthanide based transition metal based variety of these things and we know very well ion conductors of course these are all electron conductors then we have ion conductors semiconductors superconductors all of these so so all of these each of these material you don't dissolve in any other thing you need to measure as a solid state i hope you are convinced that a variety of uh, compounds the in the inorganic uh, horizon all required to be measured in the solid state so measure it so what is the problem and that is where i talk to you they are all fixed there is a huge amount of anisotropy broadening comes therefore you cannot get the information what you want what is the information you want you want the information the the of the surrounding of the other uh, moieties attached and the concentrations extend like in proton nano we were able to look at in the organic how many protons are here how many there so from that you can work out the concentration even if you mix two things together you can make tell how much of the b is in, it dissolved in a so all of those things are possible which is not possible here because of the spectra are broad or skewed in this okay so that means having looked at this the previous slide and you have seen nuclear like silicon aluminum sodium zirconium titanium vanadium so many things are coming boron lead so which of these things we can study which of these things we cannot study that we need to look at that and that is what you can see here the nucleus may have a spin 0 or half or greater than half or some of the nuclei some of the atoms may have more than one isotope there can be even more than uh, one so one of the isotope could be half another isotope could be greater than half why are we saying greater than half these are called quadrupole uh, nuclei which i have explained to you earlier when we were talking about mass wire when we were talking about the epr all these things primarily in the mass wire i have talked to you about that so they will have a different influence because this will one will have a dipolar other will have a quadrupolar so in the magnetic field quadrupolar interactions will be different dipolar interactions will be different so therefore when you are studying the solid state of this this is an important now you if you look at the this uh, periodic table all these los are i is equal to half i is equal to half they are similar to that of the hydrogen but frequency is not similar the frequency will depend upon the mu value of that and the intensity will not depend on this it will depend on on your uh, the abundance so if you have a good abundance and there is something called sensitivity of this and good abundance sensitivity and i is equal to half you can easily study that anamor so if you have the good sensitivity if you take the sensitivity for hydrogen as 1 with respect to that at least if it is 0.1 or something you can definitely study i've shown some values there sensitivity then abundance 
So, that particular nucleus what is its abundance? Uh, for example, C13 only 1.1 is not easy to study and uh, then the i value. So, if it is i is equal to half. So, if this combination you can easily study, but you can also study if the sensitivity and abundance are high and even if it is i is greater than half you can study too. But still a lot of broad spectra, squid spe skew skewed type of spectra that means something high, something broad, hump etc. So, all these things will come. So, therefore, you will not be able to. So, you can see that here I have already repeated several times about the nature of this and those with the eyes equal to half and these uh, light pinkish ones are they have both half as well as eyes equal to half. So, that means one kind of isotope will have only half other kind of isotope will have the greater than. So, as I told you the half with good sensitivity good uh, the abundance you can study very easily other ones you require ok. So, that means you can see a lot of nuclei you can study and more. So, I will show you on the uh, next slide why or how you can see this is the uh, abundance values hydrogen 99.9 almost 100 carbon is 1.1 nitrogen 0.37 it is very difficult to study the carbon 15 from the natural sample unless otherwise you enrich with that fluorine 100 silicon only 4.7 and see the receptivity or sensitivity is a one and the same this is with respect to uh, relative to proton hydrogen is taken as one this is 10 min minus 4 minus 6 20. so fluorine and hydrogen are very, very high in sensitivity then silicon got low and the phosphorus so you can study all of these and these are the frequency if the hydrogen is 500 and carbon is almost one fourth nitrogen is uh, one tenth and the fluorine is within within 10 uh, within 5 percent and the silicon is one fifth and the phosphorus is two fifth of that. So, that frequencies we already saw the relation uh, which is dependent on the their mu value in these things uh, gyromagnetic ratios of that. And some other nuclei which are also spin half which are reasonably good and uh, sensitivity not very high but ok and abundance is 7.6 uh, to some extent you can study but not very well these things will be less possible, but this 10 power 3 can be studied somewhat better because and their abundance is, is somewhat higher. Here you can study these ones uh, all these nuclei and these are all you can see the inorganic materials examples of inorganic materials these are uh, hydrates, solgel, carbides, nitrites, fluoridated, hydroapatites, glass, zeolites, carbides, see catalysts, semiconductors, uh, layer, material, laser material ceramics, super uh, semiconductors, photovoltaic all of these you require to study in the solid state and some of these definitely you can study. Even if you look at the i is equal to greater than half which is quadrupolar nuclear provided the sensitivity is good and the uh, abundance is good you can study. Which of those things you can study? The 7 lithium 0.27 sensitivity 3 by 2 is i and 92 is abundance percent. So, this is good. 11 boron 0.13 is bit low, but it can be studied. 3 by 2 i is equal to greater than half and 80 percent perfectly you can study. 27 aluminum 0.21 5 over 2 100 percent. Vanadium as yes, you can study, gallium you can study, arsenic 50 75 you can study, niobium you can study, indium you can study. So, other than the spin half nuclei which are shown here, these can be studied very easily with whatever the material you have and with that natural abundance itself you can study, but th even though these are uh, the quadrupolar nuclei. So, these are all spin half nuclei, these are all spin greater than half a quadrupolar nuclei. So, both the cases you will find this broad and sha these kind of a humps uh, and uh, suddenly there are some two horns coming like this etcetera all the two horns and a broad thing all of these kind of features. Uh, you can you will see in the solid state spectra because of the solid, because of the quadrupolar, because of the dipolar dipolar interactions. So, quadrupolar interactions, dipolar interactions happening between one spin to many other spins that are there with respect to the external magnetic field, their orientation. So, that is the reason. Yes, whatever I said now, let us look at a little uh, more closely in that uh, solid state NMO spectroscopy provides characterization of solid materials like powders single crystals, amorphous tissues anything you can study there is no problem at all. 
So what is that chemical shift anisotropy? What is that? The, the line shape. The line shape as I already explained to you because the nuclei are fixed in the solid state because of the uh, because of the lattice or formation or rigid lattice and therefore you have a huge uh, interactions between them because there is no cancellation because there is no tumbling motion, there is no rotational motions, there is no cancellation of the magnetic fields. They keep adding up and therefore that will give the line broadening. It will also result in the one nucleus is interacting with another nucleus therefore your chemical shift will differ. Another nucleus is interacting with the nuclei which you are studying. Therefore, you will have a, a, a chemical shift different values in the same compound because of so many things are there in the solid state and that is what is called the chemical shift anisotropy and when you, these, all these join together it becomes a broad hump kind of thing. So, the breadth of this. So, you can see that but whereas this is completely cancelled in a solution state in the organic molecules, they tumble very fast, they also spin there as well. Okay? And if you look at that spectra, uh, the, so, uh, the, the chemical shift, you can see that. So, these are basically subjected to the asymmetry of the system. I am talking about the nucleus which is spin, uh, which you are studying and all other uh, the surrounding. So, surrounding may not be symmetric. If it is symmetric, then it will be much less effect of that will be there. If it is non-symmetric, you will get more uh, skewed kind of thing, more distorted kind of thing and chemical shift anisotropy. Okay? So, both of these. Symmetry means arrangement of these things and the influence of those on the chemical shift that is called chemical shift anisotropy. These two, as a function of these two, you can see here. So, this is the chemical shift anisotropy 0, the blue. Okay? Uh, this 10 ppm and as you go to the 0.25, then you have the 0 0.5, 0 0.75 and 1. So, they are uh, changing into that. You can see that some of them are going in this direction, some of them are coming in this direction. The direction of this Q is also changing and that is there is a shift. So, when it comes to this, it is almost came to the uh, central part of that. Okay. Here, if you see, uh, this is the, the same asymmetry parameter and this is the chemical shift anisotropy and this is again changing for the 0, for the 5, for the 50, 10, 15, 20 changing. You see it becomes like very uh, broad up to here and then. So, whether the symmetry changes with respect to the nucleus which you are studying or the type of atoms that you have there and their influence that you have, both of these. Suppose I have all oxygens, I have some oxygen, some nitrogens some oxygen, some nitrogen, some chloride. In this uh, things, there could be oxygen in the center, the uh, uh, silicons may be there, aluminum may be there, different number of silicon, different number of aluminum in the solid state. They all differ. They all differ in their symmetry. They all differ in their the chemical shift. Both of these are very important parameters and that make is very broad. So, from this kind of spectra, what kind of information you can get? You can get nothing out of that. So, that is why where you have a, so this can be overcome by modifying some techniques. Using the modified techniques, you can always measure. One of them is called the magic angle spinning, which we will look at in a while. So, that is one thing. There is a symmetry and the type of atoms. Now, look at the dipolar. So, each nucleus which is spinning in the magnetic dipole moment will be there. They all, each one will have a magnetic dipole. So, the inter interactions between the different magnetic dipoles with respect to the nucleus which you are studying, that is also depend on the field strength and the orientation of that vector with respect to field direction. All of these, so that means these are all dependent on the gyromagnetic ratio of each. This and these nuclei need not be the same. They can be one, they can be different. Suppose you call this oxygen, this can be a, a, a silicon or this can be silicon, this can be aluminum. So, it can be oxygen, this can be aluminum and their dipolar vector joining vectors with respect to the external magnetic field. This is and as a result of that you can see one example uh, is that. So, you have a Horn's type and this one and this the D separation is called the dipolar coupling. So, what we studied earlier the, the one atom and the distribution of the neighboring atoms which is called symmetry. One atom different types of uh, atoms in the in in there because their electronegativities are different, their influence is different. That is chemical shift anisotropy. 
The third one is dipolar coupling. Beyond this is quadrupolar. So if the i, you know, right now we are looking at the i is equal to half, then it's okay. There's no. So all of these. So what all the parameters will influence uh, in the spectra is the symmetry or asymmetry around the nucleus which you are studying uh, and then uh, the variation in the neighboring nuclei that means their their number and their electronegativity all of this will be different so their influence on the chemical shift will be different so chemical shift and isotropy will bring and then dipolar coupling. So these are things which make the spectra broad uh, and the horns all these kinds of things. So the dipolar coupling can be measured from here and so you have to avoid all of these by using certain specific kind of a techniques and the formula is shown over here which is dependent on the gyromagnetic ratios of the 1 and mu 2. So this gamma 1 is for one of them gamma 2 is that and it also depends on cubed inverse cubed of the distance and also internally dependent on the the angle with which you have so all of these so the splitting between the maxima the, of the two horns uh, two horns like you can see that and this is what is equal to the dipolar coupling value so from the spectra one can get the dipolar couplings etc etc now you have to overcome to get all the information on that so that is possible when you use some special techniques. One of the most commonly used, most early started one was the magic angle spinning. How did this arise? This arose because in a solution state you have a fast, when you spin the molecules are tumbling very fast and then you are getting very sharp. So here you do not have that. So you need to rotate the samples, you take a powder of the sample and then you need to rotate and then they found out from various kinds of uh, uh, you know things they found out that when you rotate at uh, high speeds than the spectral width number one is high speed than the spectral width so your rotation speed should be greater than the speed uh, the the width of that and around uh, the one of the uh, axis because you have the sample in the magnetic field therefore you, is, is connected to a particular and therefore this can be uh, and at a particular angle is being worked out we are not going into the the, the derivation how it is come it is called the magnetic angle. When you do this maximum amount of cancellation of all these parameters anisotropy and the asymmetry all these will get uh, and reasonably the dipolar also not of course quadrupolar much so reasonably dipolar all these will cancel and they look as if they are like in a solution but not completely because in the in this solution the real tumbling is there and in solid state it is not tumbling is there you are physically bringing the fast the motion uh, of this so they, these two are not exactly the same but reasonably well resolved spectra will come therefore you can get more and more pieces of information concentrations suppose you look at the silicates how much of the silicon how much of the oxygen how much of the aluminum how much of zinc how much of uh, other metals are there all these things can be stored. so this one uh, so when you align uh, the vectors aligned the, along the z axis will be rotated through both the x and y and this way are effectively made equal and the anisotropy is removed and that is how you get. So other than this you have a quadrupolar all transitions because in the quadrupolar you have mi plus mi to minus mi and that one has to be this alone technique alone will not solve that problem if you have. So this is good enough for i is equal to half cases. If it is i is greater than half, you need additional methods. The additional methods like double angle rotation, double angle spinning. So not with one spinning, the two with respect to two angles. That means you have to change the instrumentation. So more most techniques modify sampling, sample rotation, sample spinning methods are very important. Now that is where it is developed. And so other things which will influence is J coupling. So you can have the coupling between the the centers through space or between the centers through bonds. Okay, through bond you cannot do anything. Through space you can do something. Okay, and that's where uh, so interaction of this nuclear spin through chemical bonds 
etc. All of these, those will be present and the other things can be minimized. So, to overcome many of these things, you can uh, use the cross polarization and decoupling. Variety of decoupling techniques have been developed since 90s, etc. Uh, used uh, 80s to 90s and after and uh, so that the additional information can be revealed from these ones. Now, you got a feel that why this the inorganic uh, NMR, NMR is treated separately as compared to the organic NMR uh, because of that all these things. So, because of the, the asymmetric arrangement of atoms in, in a lattice or different types of atoms arranged in a lattice surrounding to that and their dipolar interactions which are because stationary and uh, quadrupolar kind of nuclei which will influence all of these will make you see, the spectra non interpretable. Okay. Now, I have shown you one example of the things the major of these things can be gotten rid of by magic gargling spinning and quadrupolar things can be gotten rid of to some reasonable extent by not single spinning double spinning double rotation kind of thing. So, not one, one direction, the other direction also. So, these are all instrumentations are developed and where one can. Okay, whatever I talk to you for the magic angle spinning, let us look at one example. What is the changes, how it looks like, etc. Now, if you take this is some compound, you do not need to worry what compound it is. It is one of those compounds which I mentioned earlier. And if you see the compound you put into the magnetic field and you measure the spectrum, you get some this thing like broad and they are short again broad and down. This whole thing, what do you get? You get almost nothing. Now, use 10, the word, uh, this one is B is 100 hertz. Of course, this is uh, uh, expanded spectrum. Now, you spin at the rate of 100 hertz, then you start seeing some splitting of this. So, this whole thing look now like this. The central is, is still there, but this side is split, this side is split. Now, you increase to 1 kilohertz. So, 100 hertz, 0 spinning, 0, 100 and then 1000 hertz. The 1 kilohertz is 10,000 uh, hertz and you can see now this is much further split. Now, you make it to 10,000 hertz, you get very sharp signals. Okay? So, these are the kinds of, this is shown for an example of uh, the uh, spin half case. So, the static spectra, uh, you can see the, the powder and these are spinned at 54.74, but at different spin speeds. The, the spinning is a 10, 100 hertz, kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. So, the chemical shift anisotropy parameters, they can be derived from the at lower speeds uh, that you information you can get. Afterwards, you can get resolved spectrum. So, from the relative intensities, you start, you can talk about if there are different centers of nuclei, you can talk about from the areas how much of this, how much of that, how much of that, that will tell you the concentration of the same nucleus with the different surroundings that we talked about, different surroundings, okay. Not necessarily asymmetry, but different kinds of atoms neighboring, different number of neighbor atoms, that is what is called surrounding, you can study. And even this can also take care of to some extent quadrupolar anisotropy at a first order level, not at the second order level, which is very also important. So, all of these can be. So, though the resolved spectra of the this magic angle spinning, which is popularly known as MAS, looks similar to that of so solution spectra. If you look at this, you look at this, they look like a, the solution spectra, but their widths are still much greater than that of solution. Solution is just a couple of hertz. These are much greater than that, much, much greater. From here to here is a, is a 5 kilohertz. So, that means within this will be at least 100 hertz or more kind of a thing, still not as resolved, but resolved enough. They look like, so there is an inherent difference between the solution lines which are arising from molecular tumbling and whereas in this case solid state, it is a coherent rather than random. So, they are all coherent rather than random, but because they have spinned so fast, therefore, the things have got, so this uh, eliminated out. So, it is called artificial way of bringing down a broad spectra into a sharper spectra, but not the natural way of doing that. So, but still you can get a lot of information at different. So, here you can derive certain information, here you can derive certain other information, here you can get certain other information. Combining all of them, you can get uh, a lot of uh, things. So, uh, typically still the line widths of the after the MAS 
the magic, uh, magic angle spinning is still larger. So, as compared to this one. So, uh, the, this is because the chemical shifts are dispersed or broadened or they have too many values, but not like anisotropy, but like a dispersion. That is why you get instead of getting this one. So, in solution also you will get, but solution these are just in couple of hertz, whereas here couple of hundreds of hertz, 2 into hundreds of hertz kind of thing. So, that is where the difference is. So, that is what is referred as a, as a chemical shift dispersion in the solid sample. So, we looked at the, in the first, in the, in the previous class we looked at the organic NMR. In this class we have looked at the inorganic, particularly the solid state. We have still not looked at the paramagnetic, we will look at that and lot of examples. So, how this can be gotten rid of for various and how you can differentiate different centers in the solid of the same nucleus, but different centers and their uh, electronic kind of environment, all this can be the structural parameters, concentration parameters, all these can be dynamics, all these can be derived. How would you do that? Let us look at through the examples in the next coming up classes. So, we look at those then followed by paramagnetic uh, thing as well. Thank you.